If you saw my last video, then you know that the next movie I'll be fixing is The Force Awakens. However, there are two parts of that fix that I want to address in full instead of cramming them all into one video. In The Force Awakens, the characters of Rey and Finn were very likable. But I think that has more to do with the charisma of the actors rather than how the characters were written. Finn is basically useless from a plot standpoint. Would the fact that the stormtroopers are basically brainwashed child soldiers factor into the plot? Not really. Would Finn be conflicted about having to fight his former stormtrooper friends? No, he was okay with killing them. He was really only there to rescue Poe, who immediately disappeared for a good chunk of the movie. And to have some technical knowledge that, frankly, was a little convenient for a janitor to have. Sanitation. However, Finn was very relatable. He starts off just trying to get away from a bad situation, but eventually he overcomes his fear in order to defend the only friend he's ever had. Finn's character has a complete emotional arc. And that brings me to Rey. Rey's character doesn't have an emotional arc. She does learn something about herself, but that's not exactly the same thing. And her only real flaw, refusing to leave Jakku, didn't hold her back in any significant way, because she ultimately chose not to return when she had the chance. He's gonna get you home. We both will. That at least would have shown character growth, but her choice wasn't even highlighted. She just chose to go with Finn and BB-8, and then the story immediately moved on to the next problem. Rey is almost the exact inverse of Finn. Instead of having no strengths or skills, she had all of them. She was an ace pilot, a crack mechanic, spoke several languages. No, it's true, we're the only ones on board. You can understand that thing? She mastered Jedi mind tricks without even trying, and was able to win a lightsaber duel without ever having picked one up. Many people will defend her character by pointing out the practical reasons she had these skills. But no matter how justified her many strengths were, she was a fairly static character because of them. So we have a character that didn't really have a place in the story, but was likable and relatable with a full emotional arc. And we have a character that has no significant flaws to overcome or an emotional journey to go on, but is vital to the plot and the overall story being told. So the best way to fix this problem is to combine the two characters. If we give Finn's backstory to the main character of Rey, we have a character that can grow and change within the Star Wars universe in some very unique ways. If Rey was a stormtrooper that ran away because she was terrified of the First Order, the emotional stakes are raised quite a bit. Now Rey's arc throughout the whole trilogy can be about overcoming her abuse at the hands of the First Order. And that abuse is personified by Kylo Ren himself. So whenever Rey confronts him, her fear is automatically more intense. And the highlighted emotional stakes affect Kylo Ren as well. When Kylo saw Finn for the first time after he left the First Order, Kylo's reaction was not subtle. Traitor! Why was he so angry about Finn being a traitor? I mean, yeah, being a traitor is bad, but Kylo is murderously angry here. What about Finn specifically being a traitor affects him so much? The answer is because that's what he is. Ben Solo betrayed his parents, his mentor, and everyone who ever cared about him. So Finn being a traitor represents the thing that Kylo Ren hates most about himself. So throughout the trilogy, whenever Kylo confronts the former stormtrooper of Rey, his rage is that much more powerful. And that brings me to Kylo Ren. The antagonist of any given story typically doesn't change. And in some cases, the reason they don't change is what makes them the villain. But well-written villains do change how the audience looks at them. As the story progresses, it reveals more about why they are the way they are. This keeps our antagonist from being a one-note bad guy. And the character of Kylo Ren almost did this. When we first meet him, he's depicted as an incredibly powerful monster who's willing to murder and torture to get what he wants. As we go on, we're introduced to his worship of Darth Vader, making us think that maybe he's horribly scarred as well. Then when he takes off his mask, the rug is pulled out from under us when we see that not only is he not scarred, he's also just a kid. 
But the best card the character had to play was shown way too soon. And that's the fact that Kylo Ren is Ben Solo. I mean, Snoke comes right out and says it with more than half of the movie left. The droid we seek is aboard the Millennium Falcon. In the hands of your father, Han Solo. After that, all of the actions of the character are neatly put into context. But what if Snoke didn't let the cat out of the bag early? We could have been guessing about just who and what Kylo Ren was throughout the whole movie. So I propose that we have no talking about Ren's family from Lor Santeca, no grandfather line in front of Vader's helmet, and no Leia and Han talking about their wayward son. And obviously no Snoke reveal. Instead, all those scenes still happen, but they stop just shy of any Ben became Kylo talk. The time to reveal Kylo Ren's true identity is here. Ben! Now the revelation comes as a bombshell. This murderous, torturing monster is Han Solo's son. This is where the reveal would have had the most impact. In fact, it might have been so distracting that this... <laughs> would have been the finisher of a one-two punch that left us reeling and had lasting repercussions for the whole trilogy. So combining the characters of Rey and Finn and waiting to reveal who Kylo really was were two points that I wanted to explain in full before my next video. And speaking of which, keep an eye out because The Force Awakens is getting fixed very soon. So until next time, I'm Mr. Fixit for Fix the Flick.